it was such a simpler time. Okay, everybody, today we're going all the way back to 1977 to look at a little gem of a flick that I personally seen in the drive-in when I was only a little lad of seven years old. We are talking about Sinbad and the Eye of the Tiger. But before we go any further, before we dig into this gem anymore, once and again, and as always, to the trailer. These eyes peer out through time, through space to a land beyond imagination. These are the eyes of the tiger. Follow their gaze back, back to where legends first began, where fantasy is real and the land of the lost is rediscovered. Journey across the oceans of antiquity to the northern edge of the ancient world. As Sinbad battles with both human... From the depths of the earth, I command you, arise! and supernatural evil. Destroy them! Kill Sinbad! Bewitched him! Let me get the smile from her face! Filmed in the miracle of Dinorama. Starring Patrick Wayne, Taryn Power, Jane Seymour. From producers Charles H. Schneer and Ray Harryhausen, come face to face with the prehistoric Trog. See the sorceress bring life to the all-powerful Minotaur. Eat with the power as only I command you. See Sinbad battle the saber-toothed tiger, guardian of the secret shrine. Join Sinbad, the greatest of all adventurers, in his biggest adventure of all. Sinbad and the Eye of the Tiger. Okay, this motion picture was directed by Sam Wanamaker. You don't know who that is. It's okay. Let's just do this. He did The Executioner. He did Cat Lab, but mostly TV. Heart to Heart, Mrs. Columbo, Columbo, uh, Coronet Blue, uh, Hawk, uh, Custer, uh, The Defenders. But really, he's, he's more known for being an actor. If you grew up in that period of time, you're seeing his face and you're like, I know that dude. He directed? Yeah, he did. But to most of us, he's just that guy that popped up on TV a lot. Playing Captain Sinbad, the one and only Patrick Wayne. Yes, the son of John Wayne. He actually popped up in a lot of stuff back in the day, so let's run the numbers. We're talking about he was in things like McClintock. He was in Big Jake and Young Guns and the New Spartans and Beyond Atlantis and The Devil's Backbone and uh, The Green Berets and The People That Time Forgot, which you know I love, and Shenandoah and Mustang County and The Searchers, Searchers pardon me, can't talk today, and uh, TV like The uh, Police Women, uh, Love Boat, uh, Fantasy Island, Murder, She Wrote, uh, uh, All My Children, that kind of stuff. You know, he, he did the rounds. Anybody who popped up in Fantasy Island was on the love boat, and then you knew you were going to see him on Murder, She Wrote, yeah, that kind of shit. It was what it was. Thank you, Tyrion. Taryn Power, daughter of Tyrone Power. And somehow she got a higher billing in this motion picture than somebody who's going to come up later on in this list. Makes no sense. Is what it is. But we're just going to roll with it. All right. She was in the old things like Maria and the Count of Monte Cristo and the Sea Serpent and Bordello and Trax and some TV. You know, Matt Houston. She popped up on the Hardy Boys. Her career was really small. It wasn't that big. It was what it was. I think just because of the Wayne and power of connection that they put their names together in the beginning of this starring at, you know, it's whatever. She, she wasn't the lead. Playing Zenobia. Margaret Whitney. Again, a name you're not really going to know that much. 
But let's just do this. She was on stuff like Public Eye, like Play for Today, like Two Women and the Strauss Family and Love Story and No Hiding Place and some other things. She, it's not a career that's going to jump out of you. Maybe if you're over in England or something, she might ring a bell more. But, ah, playing with ideas, Patrick Thrutton. Throtten, Throtten, Throtten. I could never pronounce it right then. I can't pronounce it right now. It doesn't make a difference, but he was in a bunch of cool shit. You've seen him before. You've seen him before. We're talking The Omen. We're talking Scars of Dracula and Jason and the Argonauts and Frankenstein and the Monster from Hell and the Viking Queen and the Black Torment and the Gore God, for God's sake, and the Phantom of the Opera and just about every BBC public movie thing that you could humanly imagine. So, big career, long career, he was in this, let's keep rolling. And playing Farah, who should have had the top billing, because she's in the whole damn movie right next to him, Jane Seymour. Yes, yes. She should have been next to Patrick Wayne in the beginning, because she had the most screen time, and she was the one that was really the sidekick, and whatever. We'll get to that later. Anyway, Jane Seymour... Let's run the numbers. Of course, she was in Live and Let Die. Of course, she was in Somewhere in Time and Wedding Crashers. And she was in Oh Heavenly Dog and Lassiter. But really, she's she's probably more TV famous. You know what I mean? Battlestar Galactica? Come on. Smallville, Murphy Brown, War and Remembrance, East of Eden, and the TV show that my wife has to watch every morning at 7 a.m. Dr. Quinn, Medicine Woman. Yep, just the way it goes. And by the way, I have to throw one more thing out there. There's one more person that pops up in this motion picture. Not a whole lot, but he, he's there. The one, the only. Peter Miehu playing Miniton. You know, the big half man, half bull, whatever the hell it is. I mean, I guess a lot of it's going to be Harry Howes in animation. But we'll get to that. Okay, everybody, I'm going to try to do this in 90 seconds or less. So I'll keep it short, keep it fast, keep it on tan, keep it moving, and so we can get to it. Much rather be the summation, and I'm going to keep this one short. Well, try. Anyway, the motion picture starts out. You see this guy, Prince Kasim, and he's about to be crowned king, and his sister, Jane Seymour, is watching with awe in her eyes at her brother about to be crowned. But before you know it, something goes wrong. Poof, there's a big flash of light. You can't see what's going on. You don't know what's going on. Just cuts to the beginning of the movie in another scene. You see Sinbad, he arrives at port with his band of merry men. And he's going to go see Prince Kasim, who he would really give his life for and repay him debts that you never really know what they are. But whatever. And they go walking up to the castle, but the castle's locked. You don't know why. You can't figure it out until this guy comes up and says, Hey, there's a plague here. There's some crazy shit going on. You don't want to be here. Go back to my place. You know, get you some drinks. Whatever. It is what it is. Sinbad and the boys go back. Before you know it, holy shit. He tries to poison him. Sinbad and the boys don't like that. They got this guy under a little bit of pressure. Before you know it, though, his mama, Zenobia, shows up. Well, you can't really tell it's her, but it's her. Whatever. So, Zenobia shows up, and she brings up these three demons from hell out of the ground, much like you've seen Jason the Argonauts with the skeletons, and they have a sword fight, and it is what it is. And Zenobia escapes with this young man who sent them there. It turns out to be your kid. Long story. Who cares? doesn't make a difference. But right after that, Sinbad bumps him to his girl, Farah, Jane Seymour, and she tells him the truth. Holy shit, there's no plague. Somebody turned my brother, Kasim, into a baboon, and we have to get him to safety. We have to somehow undo this curse. Well, you find out that he was about to be crowned king, and Zenobia, who happens to be the evil stepmother to them, wants her son to be the new king, and she has to get Kasim out of the way, so she turns him into a baboon, Long story short, Sinbad and the hot chick, they take Kasim as a baboon, and they go running off to find this magical wizard who can heal him. When they get to the magical wizard, the magical wizard said, we have to go to this other place where there's like these superpowers coming down from a pyramid, whatever, and bathe him in the light, and he'll turn back into a human being, but we only got seven days to do it. Let's get cooking. The whole time that's going on, Zenobia, her kid, and this giant nine foot tall, which sometimes shrinks and grows in height depending on scale and how screwed up the special effects department did. Guy named Minoton, which is built from the fire of Hades or whatever the hell he is, I don't know. But he's a giant half man, half bull, and whatever. 
So anyway, Sinbad, his boys, they're going. They got the wizard. They're going. They're going to the North Pole, wherever it is, to get to this magical place. And who's following up behind them? But Zenobia and her kid and the Minotaur, and she's spying on them, turning into a bird, and then turning back to a human, but half with a bird leg because she didn't have all the potion. I don't want to give you any more than that. You get the idea. It's a goddamn Sinbad movie. Just roll with it. Okay, everybody. Does Sinbad in the Eye of the Tiger work? Yeah, it works. But in a weird kind of way. Hear me out. You're going to hear me say some things that are going to make you think I'm going to go one way. But just stick with me. and We'll get there. Okay, first off, let's get the big three out of the way. The directing? It's all right. I mean, the editing is probably the biggest problem. But the directing's okay. It's there. Some shots look all right. Some really don't, and we're going to hit on it. But it got you from point A to point B. The writing! Uh, it's okay. It's not amazing. It's a little bit one-dimensional and cartoonish in places. And sometimes you just sit there and shake your head and go, what? But it's acceptable for what it is, so, yeah. And the acting, it ranges from, you know, acceptable to decent to sometimes hokey, sometimes cartoonish, sometimes a little ridiculous. But, you know, it is what it is. We'll, we'll get back to this. Okay, now let's get back to where this motion picture works. I said it works, and it does work. But it's got flaws. Let's just get the flaws out of the way first. I know I usually give you the good before the bad, but this is one of those times I think we're just going to go in and reverse the game. Let's just get it up front. The editing in this motion picture can be a little bit hackneyed and jerky at times, and you're just like, why? Why'd they do it like that? Looks a little bit silly. Looks like there was something that just got cut out and missed. It is what it is. It's there, it's going to catch your eye, you're going to notice it. Number two, the special effects. Ooh. Well, you got the Ray Harryhausen stuff, which is why we're all here, let's be honest. You know what I mean? It's one of those things, Ray Harryhausen, Jane Seymour, and Sinbad Flake. But other than the Ray Harryhausen effects, which we all know and we all love, there's some points to this motion picture where, my God, there was green screen work going on that was so horrendously bad. It was like somebody said, hey, we need to do some pickup shots. We got some footage, and we're just going to have, you know, Patrick and Jane walk in front of it like they're walking and talking, and there's going to be weird shit going on in the back. It, it, it's jarring. Sometimes the green screen work in this motion picture is jarringly bad. I mean, the worst I've ever seen any Sinbad or Jason the Argonauts or anything like that. It's just, it's, it's jarringly bad. I don't know what happened. I don't know how we got there, but it happened. And finally, yes, the characters are cartoons. They're pretty simple. They're pretty straightforward. They try to give a little bit of depth, maybe, with the relationship between Jane Seymour and Patrick Wayne. Yes, but everybody else is just a cartoon. I mean, Zenobia is just evil because she's evil. You know, the wizard that's helping them is always forgetting things and just finding things that just were a value laying under the table in, like, the cat litter box and shit. And you're just like, huh? What? And every time somebody needed something, they're like, where is that? Wait, I got the potion right here. That kind of shit. So the characters are badly cartoonish. The story is incredibly simplistic. Some of the effects, other than Harryhausen, are completely shit. But, none of that matters. Because you know why? It's a Sinbad movie, people. It's a Sinbad movie. And they all had elements of that in it, whether you want to admit it or not. Whether you want to admit the other Sinbad movies had it or not, or even Jason or the Argonauts had it or not. There's good and there's bad in all those flicks. There's things that are going to jump out at you as being great, and there's things that are going to be, well, kind of a slap in the face. So you don't really care. Let's be honest, we're there for three reasons. One, we love Sinbad movies. The adventure, the thrill, 
the kid in all of us. And remember, this motion picture was made for kids. It's not meant for people in their 50s and 40s and 30s and all that kind of shit. It might be meant for us now to reflect upon and to have some nostalgia with and to remember that part of ourselves when we were a little kid and the world hadn't, you know, come down upon us. And we could sit there and have those adventurous dreams and those adventurous thoughts and those adventurous moments and sit there and watch a motion picture like this and just let our imagination wander and forget about all the flaws or not notice them at that age and then just enjoy yourself. So when you go back and you look at it now, you remember that wonderment. You say, okay, this thing's got some serious flaws, but you remember what it was like and you enjoy yourself. And for even adult, you can sit there and say, okay, man, you know, soundtrack's kind of pumping, has some beautiful music to it. You can sit there and you say, Patrick Wayne tried to do something really cool here. And you can always say, I got another chance to see some of the great work of one Ray Harryhausen. And hell, if, you know, guy my age, you can even say, my God, the scene on the rocks with Jane Seymour, when you see more of Jane Seymour than you planned on seeing with Jane Seymour. Who? Oh, it's all worth the price of admission right there. So is it a flawed movie? Of course it is. It's a kid's movie about a guy getting a wizard and his girlfriend. And they're going to go off and turn a baboon back into a person. But they got to sit there and fight with a giant fur tiger and a giant massive seal. But they make a friend with the troglodyte, with the horn on his head, in the club. He's their buddy. That kind of shit. That's what this is. That's all it is. Remember that when you watch it today, or if you haven't seen it before and you're watching it brand new. It's a kid's movie, made for a simpler time, when you can just sit there and have some innocent fun and adventure. It's a throwback to the kind of movies you're not going to see really anymore. You're not going to see them without some political stuff thrown in there or whatever. And come on, I'm telling you right now, the minute, I, the minute I seen Patrick Wayne as Sinbad, and he's got the two girls, they're running from the troglodyte, and he hands them off, and he says, whatever, I can't remember the guy's name, doesn't make a difference, who gives a shit? And he says to them, hey, here, take the, protect the women! Ah! God damn, you don't see shit like that no more. I'm saying it, it is what it is. Didn't mean the girls weren't strong characters that were there doing the, whatever. But you don't see movies like this no more. It's fun. It's adventurous. It's a throwback to another time. It should be looked upon with fondness in the heart. And if you're seeing it for the first time, go into it with an open head. Remember when it was made. Just take it for what it is. Sit there and watch some masterful work of a special effects artist who's long since gone but left us with a treasure trove of shit. I mean, we're talking about stuff like, you know, uh, uh, Jason and the Argonauts. We're talking about stuff like Mighty Joe Young, Clash of the Titans, A Million Years B.C., uh, the Golden Voyage of Sinbad, the Seventh Voyage of Sinbad, uh, 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 Earth, Earth and the Flying Saucers. His career is legendary, and it's half the reason that we're here. Harryhausen, Adventure, Sinbad, Guys on the Boat. It is what it is. Flawed, yes. Goofy, uh-huh. One-dimensional, completely. But made for kids, and now made for the kid that still lives inside of all of us. Okay, everybody, I've ranted enough. Once again, and as always, be good. Stay out of trouble. Be there for a friend. Be kind to a stranger. But most of all, under no circumstances ever take any bullshit from anybody. See y'all soon.